This is a podcast miniseries presented by Modular Media. Little worse than a pod, little better than a cast, was performed in front of a pre-recorded Help studio us. audience. Help so you guys know Help the us. best thing about this week's episode? What? What? It's in uh, the, it's, it's a style of sitcom that came about around the same time that podcasts were just coming into prominence. So I don't have to do a special intro for this week. Hey, everybody, welcome to Little Worse Than a Pod, Little Better Than a Cat. All right. Uh, I'm the the Vacuuminator, and I'm joined, as always, by Boingo Rider. Hey! I'm looking at the camera right now, but you can't see. I'm sorry. And Buster Corp is here. Or Buster Corp, sorry. It's fine. People always mispronounce that thing. It's like, Corp, Corpse. It's a Corp! It's a corp. I'm a corporation. I'm a living corporation. Okay. It's, it's because the, it's because whoever invented the Green Lantern Corps doesn't know how to spell. Yeah. At well, I mean, that's what I'm going to blame for me doing that. I mean, yes. core. That's how core is spelled, as in like a military corps. Well, really? Screw the military. Yeah. Screw, yeah. The mili- screw the military and all their ads that flood my YouTube. Anyway, that's besides the point. One division breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> Yay! We're here. It's episode seven of this show. Disappointed and... by the lack of Lankara. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, we're breaking it. He's going to fall down next episode. Yeah. Because yeah. he's on top of the fourth wall. Yeah. We're bad comics burned. Lankara's going to teach you all of us. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to go first with first impressions this week, just because I feel like I need to preface everything with, um, I didn't like a lot of this episode, but there were two things in it that I really liked. And we'll get to those when we get to those. Um, Boingo, how did you feel about the episode? I liked it because they basically knew that they were getting to this era of sitcom and they knew the tropes that they could play with. And they were like, all right, we can use these tropes to really accentuate how far gone Wanda is, hmm. you know, because before it was, uh, before the sitcom tropes were kind of like a veneer, uh, a safety blanket, so to speak. Now it's genuinely the sitcom tropes are, are like showing how far she's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to mention something similar to that where it's like, actually the sitcom tropes legit feel like it's actually impacting the character's mood. Like, like it makes sense for like. Uh, how do I put this? You get what I mean. You should like, it, especially it, with like uh, the connecting. vision bit. The vision bit later to- makes more uh, like fits really well thematically. Yeah, the vision bit is actually one of the two things I liked about the episode. Oh, oh the vision bit's so um, good. I, I just love circus but, settings uh, in Buster, general. So. What's your general thoughts? What's your general thoughts, Buster? Okay. Yeah. Like I was just a bunch. I I'll start with, since I was just talking about it. I love the circus setting that Vision and Darcy are in. That that's fun. I just love circus settings and just like all the little funny gags they get into and just how you just have this like this character who you see in these epic action scenes in past movies just kind of walking around being annoyed driving in a bus with like a scientist. It, it just there's just some visual comedy to that that I love. It's like th- that's just great visual comedy, and then the stuff with like Wanda, I, I thought that was really like interesting, like especially like, also quick quick detail. Probably like I, I boy go probably notice this. I love how when the kids have the controllers and the D reality is going wacky, the controllers switch to different generations of games. Like you start with, like GameCube, Atari, and then Uno. <laughs> I just I just thought that was a neat thing. But real quick though. That that was weird because those were traditional GameCube controllers, not WaveBirds, but they didn't have a wire. Maybe well, is there a GameCube Classic? Is that a thing? They might no. be. Oh, uh, it could be a Switch. Like, there's like a there's like no. A all the controller. GameCube controllers they're making for the Switch are wired. Hmm. Oh no, I swear there was some a wireless edition. That uh, whatever. Not by my Nintendo. That's a third party recreation. Okay, well, it could be a third party recreation. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you know, went, went to a retro gaming store and bought the first ones they saw that didn't look like complete crap. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, like we're we're getting way too deep into like what the hell are the GameCube controllers about? But like I love that. I love that. What do the GameCube controllers symbolize about Wanda's mental condition at this point in the story? It is very powerful, but it is weakening comparative to other people's powers. Mm-hmm. And it is also probably means she's been. <laughs> She hasn't showered. Yeah. Uh, so she also likes to talk to minors. 
Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Astro. Roll, it back, Astro. Roll, it back, roll it back. Roll it back. Roll it back. Roll it back. Oh, um. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get right into it. I really hate this style of sitcom. I've Oof. never been a fan of mockumentaries. I I hate The Office. I hate Parks and Rec. Um, I never even watched an episode of Modern Family. Just anything with this style, it's really off-putting to me. Like either I've never gotten mockumentaries in general. Um, like I've always avoided Spinal Tap because I like some clips from it, but it, I know it's a mockumentary, so I don't think I'll like it if I actually sit down and watch it. Hey, can I do a quick interject? I just love the word mockumentary. That's a funny word. I probably it is a funny word. I'll give it that. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, if you're gonna tell a, a fictional story, tell it as a fictional story. Don't try and pass it off as real. And I get that. Like, I mean, yeah. How being... dare Dracula be told in through the framing of being a diary? Is that is that how that is? I've never actually yeah. read that book. That's, okay. That has been the mockumentary has been a style tell uh storytelling format for years. When you think about hmm. a diary for what became not even like anyway. Continue. Um, uh, War of the Worlds, the radio drama that uh, George Orwell did, not Orwell. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I'm speaking specifically to modern mockumentary. Okay, like the sitcom mockumentary then. Yeah, like that's just not a format for me. So all the stuff with Wanda. Like talking to the camera and whatnot, that that didn't do much for me. I liked Vision's bit of doing that just because he he actually went like, wait, why am I doing this? I'm a superhero. I don't have to sit here. It's also just the, again, as I mentioned, the visual comedy of that. Just you have this like guy robot from like all these big action movies just like chilling, <laughs> trying to take off the hell. He couldn't get comfortable in the chair too. That was great. Yeah, um, just, just the visible uncomfortableness. Um, Wonderful. Uh, and uh yeah that 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 whole aspect of this episode didn't really do much for me um i also feel like we should talk about the fact that they totally swerved us bro um the contact wasn't anyone and that was oh, a yeah. little disappointed or, like it's literally not a comics character it's not a comics character but it could be an mcu character well, I mean, That's it true. already they is do... an MCU character because it just came... A pre-established MCU character. Ah, okay, okay. No, it was that the lady, Major Goodner. She's not in anything before this. I mean, she could have been. We could have seen her as a little girl when she was green. Huh? I'm saying she's a covert scroll working with... Oh, she, you think uh, she's, uh, uh, she's Palace's daughter from she could Captain be. Marvel? She could be. I'm not saying she is. I think that that is still a possibility. I did not even think of that, but that would be interesting. Because remember, uh, they became friends during uh, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone hated Captain Marvel for weird reasons, so nobody wants to think about it, even though I I, I it didn't fun. hate about it. I just thought it was bland. Yeah. It, was, it was a template origin story that you need to do for a character like that because not everybody fucking knows about the origin. Yeah. And, and, or that, and like them doing that also came off as a little insulting to me because they had just said like a couple movies ago, we're done doing origin story. And then Kevin and then Kevin Feige went, wait a second, I want to do Captain Marvel. Shit, no one knows Captain Marvel. I guess we gotta fucking do one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, it was a fine movie, but anyway, one division. I mean, technically in like They've been doing better with Origins because Black Panther's origin was in Civil oh, War, yeah. so oh, it was a background yeah. B plot yeah. for the B plot. Uh, yeah. um, uh, and like the thing with um, the whole thing with Darcy explaining the backstory division, I saw some people complaining about that and they and saying like they felt it was too handholdy because everybody in the world has seen Infinity War, don't you know? And I'm like. Yeah, but like, what about that old person who just tuned into this on Disney Plus? Because oh, look at this nice old fashioned sitcom. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. <laughs> but also, <laughs> it was. But also, it's not necessarily like here's information you need to get caught up. It's to show Vision that hey, your life has been pretty fucking weird, and despite all the things that you've been going through, Wanda has been consistent and has been genuinely cared about you like mm -hmm. yeah that's what but, that scene was to me it was le it was less here's all the information you need and more here's all the information so we can get to the point of yeah but wanda cares about you mm -hmm. she's just yeah. been through a lot man like it isn't like uh, speaking of being through a lot like this episode just really i just i think it's my one of like 
I think this episode maybe really click like I, I'll this entire series is maybe click with Wanda, but like this episode especially just confirm solidify that click if that makes sense. Just of how just stressed she is and just like everything going wrong and just man, that's a mood. That's just a mood. It's also just a really cool comic booky thing of like giving the uh, putting the person who has super power ultimate control and putting them in a situation where they have no control. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do like the idea of her, of like taking an episode for the characters to kind of decompress after everything that's happened and like, oh, it's starting to get a little out of hand. Everybody needs to catch their breath and figure out what they're doing. Um, I saw again, some people complaining that like, oh, it feels like they're stalling just to get to that big reveal at the end of the episode. And I'm like, but didn't they literally lampshade that? Isn't that the point of the episode? Haven't you ever heard of taking a break before the third act? Yeah. Like, yeah, I honestly, I first, uh. like, w this episode's weirdly disarming on a first watch, except uh, except for the end, which we'll get to it. Because I really think, oh, this isn't going to be a, that big of an episode till the end. But when you look back, there's some pretty big things, mainly with Monica. Uh, should we talk about that scene? Yeah, because Monica's pretty much full on uh, photon now, isn't she? Yep. Yeah. Which, uh, I, that was a really cool scene. That I, I love, like hero origins, where it's like th they're going through this big thing, and they all their past memories comes back to them, and they're like, "Yeah, like th that's like how, like from Pat from like when I was born to like now, how much I've grown, and just like they break through it, like." Yeah, the only time I think I've not liked that trope is in Rise of Skywalker. Like usually, oh, that's God. really well done. <laughs> God. Ah, uh, this comment section's gonna be hell now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I never got a chance to talk about Rise of Skywalker in a thing. I had to get that jab in there. Okay. It was a good movie. Uh, going uh, moving on. Uh, I really like the again, like Black Panther. This is a superhero origin as the B plot to an ongoing story, which is a keep really good going. way of do it. it's a keep smart things way going. To keep the universe feel like it's always growing. Yeah, but uh, Photon also just like they really like. In one second, they got one aspect of her power really uh, explained really well because she is the entire electromagnetic spectrum. She can control all of it. So mm -hmm. gamma, alpha, microwaves, radio, she can control all of that so she can perceive it and then you see it in the hex and it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, It's like she's peeling back a layer to look at the cross section. Uh, also, when she took off the spacesuit, it looked kind of like Photon's uh, superhero costume. Yeah, I did yeah. notice that. Yeah, I, I I really hope she does like she wears like a coat because like I, I like her like the costume with the black coat. So it's like I really hope mm -hmm. they complete that look. Um, the the next wave look. Yeah, that would be dope. Um, yeah. Can we I talk about the? Uh, oh, that could, are we could, just are we gonna go to the thing? Are we just do you just want to go to the thing? I, I want to gush about the Marvel Cinematic Musical verse. Like, oh my God, Agatha! After all was stuck in my head for like a day and a half. Yeah. Who's that? Da, 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 da. It was Agatha all along. So apparently Boygo was actually right. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like and that uh, Agatha's We called him a madman. Yeah, I was like, yep. yeah, it was a red herring, but no, I, the fool's me. I am fool. Yeah. And um, I saw I people mean, complaining about like, oh, they shot some of the scenes completely differently during that that montage and I'm like Yeah, we went back to sitcom verse. It's called magic. She's magic. literally a witch. It's magic is showtime. Don't you understand? Yes. <laughs> yeah. But like kind of showcasing like she's been helping along all the weirdness and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I actually have a theory. I have a theory. Remember how she mentioned her husband? Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. What if that's Mephisto? I don't know. That's been a theory. That's been a theory. We've been theory, talking about that a couple times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would definitely be down for that. I've also seen people talking about because of the mid credit sequence, maybe Quicksilver is just like her assistant or something who's been helping her out and he was disguised as um, uh, Quicksilver for that episode. But honestly, I kind of feel like he's probably still Quicksilver and she just pulled him out of the X Men Fox universe. I think. I think Quicksilver's mind controlled uh, at the moment. Mm hmm. Yeah. But uh, if I may, I have a fucking hot theory take thing. Go that ahead. It's going to go against what the majority of people are saying about this. All right. I don't think Agatha is 
evil. Hmm. I don't on. think Agatha is doing this maliciously or is like doing the is the villain, so to speak. See, because I saw a ton of people going like, oh, she's the scapegoat because they don't want to make Wanda into a villain, even though this is totally something a villain would have done. So she's behind all of it. I'm like, no, they show in the montage. Agatha doesn't show up until like a little while after Wanda has started doing things. So Wanda still did some fucked up shit. Agatha's just been messing with her this whole time. But I, I agree with that. That's the situation. But I don't think Agatha's doing it evilly. Uh, she's not doing it because I want power. I want your children. Meh. Because here's the thing. This entire show has been putting something in front of us, saying it's one thing, and then it's another. Mm, that could. Okay, so what I do you think, think is going people. on then? Go ahead. Buster? Me. Oh, me. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, it. sorry, I thought your boy was going to speak. I think Agatha might be like a wild card, like not good, not evil, just kind of messing and seeing like ticking off and just quote unquote helping in her own wild card way. I mean, that's kind of what she is in the comics, right? She's neutral to good. Mm. Okay. That, uh, that's about kind of it. Uh, here's the thing. They have put things in front of us. Uh, like nothing has been what it seemed, mm -hmm. right? That's that's been basically a, an undercurrent of the entire show. Vision is not what he seems. This town is not what it seems. The sitcom isn't what it seems. The babies aren't what they seem because they grow and do all that stuff. Pietro is not what he seems. So why now, when they go blatantly out in the open with two episodes left? Hey, by the way, here's our villain. She has a whole musical number saying how she's so bad and did everything wrong. Because what? they can have the next two episodes be a big Marvel smash up fest. They do that. They that'd be the last episode. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, why would why immediately trust this now? Hmm. Good point. Because I trusted you saying she was going to be revealed to the villain. I didn't trust you saying that a few episodes ago, and now I'm being bit in the ass, and you're changing your tune, and I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I just said no. Last episode, I just said I don't think she's uh being controlled. I think she's just she's magic and she has and she's like faking it. So we don't know exactly. I don't. I don't think I ever said she's a, a definitively evil working for. Me. Okay, but more important question. So what? Okay, in the comics, where did she get her magic from? Please exposit. Uh, she was. She's an ancient witch. She was in the Salem witch trials. Like okay. she's she's fucking old. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, like, if she's not evil, then what did happen to the kids? Why is she acting like she wanted the kids? No idea. We don't know what happened to them yet. But uh, remember, they, they are chunks of Mephisto. And in the comics, Agatha encouraged the kids to happen so that the chunks of Mephisto's soul could be brought back to Mephisto and make it, like, so they aren't floating out into ether causing fucking trouble. Mm. Good. Gotcha. Okay. What do you what do you think the book is? Is that something I should have recognized? The Dark Hold. Explain. The Dark Hold is Marvel's Necronomicon, but like ten times worse. Oh, Ooh. cool. Uh, it is created by uh, an eldritch being known as Chathon. I want to see him in the uh, MCU and it's now, just based on his name. Uh, it's basically all the fucking evil magic. Like excellent. Every other page is how to blow up the fucking world. Here's, like, necromancy, all the fucking evil magic, all in one book. Um, which means that we're also setting up more magic stuff, perfect for Blade, and say, maybe a certain uh, Flaming Skulled Head dude to come into the MCU. Okay, yeah. wait, so is, oh yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't canon anymore, so, no. <laughs> sorry, Robbie. And even then, he's not officially a ghostwriter. Dang it! Oh. Robbie Ray, uh, uh, Robbie is, <sighs> okay. So to be an official, no, that 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 was his origin from the beginning. Uh, to be an official uh, okay. ghost writer, to be a ghost writer, like full stop, you must be possessed by the spirit of vengeance, which is a like full on official like angel demon thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Robbie was, however, possessed by his dead uncle's spirit, who became a demonic entity because of satanic rituals. Okay. <laughs> yes, comic books, people. Uh, so, he's not, so he is not the ghost writer. He is the ghost driver, essentially. Yeah, yeah he's he's common. He's the common writer driver of the ghost writer. <laughs> oh, I was God. about to say this writer is a driver. 
Um, but he is like lumped into the Ghost Rider family of characters. Like they kind of yeah. see him as like you're, as you're, you're not a Ghost Rider, but you're with us. You're, we will help you out. Was he on the Avengers for a while? Uh, yeah, he was, yeah uh, he was on. He was in Jason Aaron's run. Yeah, yeah. when they yeah. Uh, he went to hell and raced uh, Johnny Blaze, King of Hell. Nice. What's Danny cool. Ketch, Ghost Rider, gonna gonna get a move? I want him. No idea. Danny Ketch is like Danny Ketch is very dependent on Johnny Blaze because they are brothers. Actually, mm. speaking of like uh, connecting this back to Wandavision, do you think we <laughs> might see Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider in like a multiverse thing? <laughs> I feel like that's an untapped market now. Uh, now here's the thing: as a person who actually genuinely kind of liked the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movies. I wouldn't mind it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can I don't think definitely I mean, see it being a you cameo. You know, he'd be down over. for it. That man never says no to anything. Yeah, Especially that's Especially because of all the taxes problems. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Cage has worked with Marvel before in Spider-Verse. So I'm like... Mm-hmm. And, like, we already have a couple Spider-Verse alumni coming to the actual MCU. So I'm like, maybe he can make a cameo in Multiverse of Madness? Maybe? Fingers crossed? But, uh, Literally, just they of... open they open a door and he's taking a flaming piss and he's like close the door and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that would, greatest cameo in all of cinema. <laughs> but uh, uh, speaking of multiverse, that ad though. Oh yeah, that was actually that was one of the I think that was one of the better ads we've had. I mean, I still love the stop motion depress like just the total whiplash uh, stop motion ad. But I think that might this might be my second favorite ad, just because it's so accurate and just I, I love passive aggressive comedy like that. So it's also the first one that's advertising something that's coming to the MCU rather than something we're dealing with right now or have yeah, dealt okay. with in the past. I'm sorry to say I first heard of the Nexus through Fortnite. You may all shoot me now. It's fine. Nexus the Nexus is basically the the web of reality in the Marvel lore. Uh, yeah, it's the Marvel Morphin Grid. Yeah, nice. Uh, typically, the guardian of the Nexus is Man Thing. Okay, because you got him. I know. Giant. Yeah, he was in Giant Size Man Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's basically Marvel Swamp Thing, ex- with a different face. Uh, I don't think, and I saw some theories that oh, this is good. Like they're dealing with the Nexus of realities here in New Jersey. Um. I don't think so because normally the nexus of reality is in Florida and the Everglades. Do we have any? Ca- and oh, oh god, that reminded me of that terrible inhuman show that took place in Florida. No, Hawaii. I oh, Hawaii. Not that. Uh, is it is not very good. <laughs> and it's not canon. That's what yeah, I, those are the two ignore things it. I know about it already. Just ignore it. It doesn't exist. It didn't happen. It's, like it's, from the ten, it's from the 10 seconds that they thought they weren't going to get to have mutants in the MCU. No, yeah. it's from the 10 seconds that Ike Perlmutter thought they wouldn't uh, They wouldn't have mutants in the MCU. Because that was all Ike. <laughs> Fuck Ike. Yeah, Fuck screw Ike, Ike Perlmutter and his casual racism sometimes. There's a, he has a record of that. Look it up. Oof. Oh, he also oh, has oh. a record of donating to Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what the- also, uh, when you were talking about the Nexus, Chris, this is all I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> the Operation Overdrive screenshot? It's in a place called Florida. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and also, real quick, just it, this is just the Marvel nerd and me kind of bubbling up and just going like, guys, come on. Of people going like, oh, Wanda's going to create the Marvel, uh, the multiverse in the Marvel movies. And I was like, no. The Marvel movies are already part of the goddamn multiverse. They're Earth one nine 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 nine. Endgame did Endgame just like made the entire multiverse a thing? Especially since we have the Loki show taking place in another verse, so it's just yeah. Yeah, But that's like timeline multiverse, which is a common thing in Marvel. That's how we get Age of Apocalypse and Days of Future Past. Yeah. <sighs> the fucking keeping all the it's weird keeping all this shit straight because there's a bunch of dumb bullshit. <laughs> And it's we still know that time. you have red eyes and a cork board. It's okay. Yep. Uh, but I'll this just, be glad we're not, just be glad we're not dissecting the Fox X Men movie timeline, which is apparently even more confusing. Despite they don't it. have a timeline. They're just making movies. Yeah, they don't so give like a shit. It's so like DC. Yeah. Okay. The only one that's keeping track of anything is Marvel, and even then, that's kind of hinky. Yeah. yeah. I think they're, and they're kind of approaching the point where let's just do dumb stuff for fun. 
And I, I love it. I love when they do that. We've, yeah. we've got their attention. Now let's give them the weird Marvel shit that all the Marvel fans want. Now it's time for the old razzle-dazzle. Am I right, fellas? Give me Beta Ray Bill. All of my heart, give me Beta Ray Bill. Look, if that Spider-Man 3 multiverse theory is real, put spy- uh, the Toei Spider-Man in it. Yes. Get the Japanese actor, bring him back. Yeah, I mean, he already did the interview for uh, 616, so... I mean... Marvel has and their you number. Know what? I feel like after this year, with the amount of shit they're putting out this year, I think like we might already be ready to do Gwenpool in this universe. <laughs> we honestly, I, I could yeah. see that. Uh, Gwenpool would if be only interesting. Just so I could see the hoodie suit in live action. That, that would look sick. Yes. Oh shit! We're also still getting Eternals. And Eternals oh, yeah. is a whole giant bag of fucking worms. Oh my god! I know literally nothing about Eternals, and I'm so excited about that fact. Like oh. the, all I know is that the, the the Eternal suits look like the 2017 Power Ranger suits, but without helmets and more colorful. So they look nothing like the 2017 Power Ranger suits. Okay, though. you're right. That's an oxymoron. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they do look Kirby esque though. They do look like a modern reinterpretation of the Kirby designs. Yeah, the cast is very promising. I heard there's like a knight character in it, played by like a character from Game of Thrones. Not character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Black Knight. Yeah, Black Knight yeah. was an Avenger. Ooh, yeah, I, yeah, I just love it. Uh, there's like three different guys who have been Black Knight, and they did a Marvel Legends that just came with three alternate heads, so it can be any of them. Okay, if, uh, I might consider buying that if like I like Eternals enough. So, and Cersei was also an Avenger, and she's an Eternal. Um, but that's a whole big weird bag of worms because you have to get into the the Wanda bag of worms. The... <laughs> but ultimately. There's a bunch of things that can be, like, there's not a ton of things that we can go, like, we definitively know what the next episode's gonna be, but there is a bunch, they threw out some Marvelisms that make you go, like, okay, so this might be a direction, like, Agatha Harkness, right? Um, the rabbit's name is Scratch, but we knew that, uh, and that could probably be a reference to Agatha's son, Nicholas okay. Scratch. Nicholas okay. Scratch is a bad guy. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, we got the dark hold, which who knows what the fuck that's gonna do. Uh, and we got, uh, and we got potentially something else is up with Quicksilver. And you know, uh, we, to talk about, we didn't talk about the mid credit scene because okay, uh, uh, Boingo had to tell me in VAC about this. There's a mid credit scene in this episode after like six weeks of now no mid credit scene. It's weird. They totally like tried to get us used to that, and then they were like, "No, nah, this is still Marvel." Yeah. It, yep. it, it's Marvel, baby. It's Marvel. Uh, but uh, Monica Rambeau's searching Wanda's house and is looking for things. She opens up the basement and you see a similar dungeon as to under Agatha's house. Then, which looks. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to be that guy. It looks like the Never from Minecraft. Oh, like, I can it, see it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it might be like a, a Nexus portal of some Ooh. kind. Hmm. As a bridge between realities. Well, like from from what I know of the Fortnite crossover, the Nexus is already purplish, and there's a, quite a bit purple there, so I can see it. But you know, technically, the the Fortnite stuff is canon, right? Yeah, yeah. they 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 made they put the, they like I know it because they put the suit from uh, the Thor com like they they never put like co- comic suits that just debuted as a Fortnite skin if it wasn't going to be canon, you know? Um, yeah. Because also that the first storyline of that Thor, uh, he becomes a herald of Galactus, and they're trying to fight off a uh, dark energy. Ah, also, okay, that makes a little more sense. What? But and- you know what? What else we don't know yet that they've still left on the table? Ralph? No, no, we already no. discussed that. We don't know who Jimmy Woo's contact is, Ooh. and we still don't know who that actor that Paul Bettany said he had always wanted to work with is. We still haven't seen that character. Call it now. He's going to appear next episode. Next episode, and we're going to have a big, big battle blow-off in the final episode. Or we're going to have a big final blow-off at the end of the next episode. And the last episode is going to be finishing up the battle and uh, wrap up. I mean, big big Marvel Battle Royale at the end of this show was always an inevitability. Uh, there, there's uh, one more thing I want to say. Oh, yeah, like, like um, Pietro, what, like, maybe Wanda just, like, when you Wanda yeeted him, I don't know, it's probably the Agatha thing, because Pietro was barely in this episode, minus the mid-credit scene, which yeah. honestly made me realize, oh, dang, I really like that character. <laughs> just he was delightful. 
Um, it also like the kids were barely they barely got to do anything in this episode as well. So it's like, man, like I feel like so, like and I really like those kids. So I'm just I, I think it's I, partially because they wanted to refocus on. Hey, by the way, Wanda is having a breakdown. Yeah, pr- <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I, it's more of a nitpick where it's like, oh, I, I really like those characters, but I understand why they're not there. But the fact that they did keep them around at this point in the show makes me feel like they're not going to be revealed to be kids who are being puppeted. They are legitimately Wanda's kids, and we're going to see them in future movies. Yeah, but here, it, it, I definitely think that because we are dealing with the dark hold, we are dealing dealing with multiverse stuff, we are dealing with nexus of realities and stuff that because also, also Wanda's a nexus being, which means she is a theoretical constant between the multiverses. Uh, I just, I also think that these are these these actors that are currently playing the kids. They're here to stay. We're not gonna get another age up. I, I, that's yeah, because they like, want to they... be able to ring another twenty years out of those actors. Yeah, oh yeah, that, and... we're pro- we're probably gonna get Young Avengers in like three years. Yeah, like probably and, in Phase Five. Uh, and like, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Um, I mean, we do have. Once she turns good, because she will, I don't think they're going to have her be a done in one baddie, because I do think she is actually the baddie. The way they revealed her was just too much baddie fun to not have it be that. But I think Agatha will turn good after this series. And, you know, she's one of the two kind of designated babysitters in the Marvel Universe. So, yeah, she she could be like a mentor to the like Young Avengers or something. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And we are getting Fantastic Four. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, uh, quick quick pop quiz. Do you guys know who the other designated babysitter in the Marvel Universe is? Squirrel Girl. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I, I know she Squirrel Girl. She babysits Luke Cage and Jessica Jones' daughter on the regular. Nice. And now it makes me sad that those Marvel Netflix shows are no longer canon. because. But they have the like... rights to them all. Yep. They can so, bring them back. Yeah. I, I still hope that, like, it, it doesn't have to be, like, Matt Murdock in costume. I just hope he just cameos in Spider-Man 3, just, like, as, as just a person just walking around. He doesn't have to say anything. He can just be walking around and give a smirk to the camera. No, no, he's going to be in the first ten minutes to get Peter out of the secret identity jam. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, even if that doesn't happen, I'd just be fine with him just showing up. <laughs> Either Matt Murdock or She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. and- yeah, She-Hulk. And I want them to bring Daredevil back as a show, and I want them to bring Jessica Jones back, and then don't do another season of Luke Cage or Iron Fist. Just give me Heroes for Hire. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. I think they were gonna do that, but like you know, the whole like we have Disney Plus now. Screw you, Netflix. Mm-hmm. And also, that was a deal made with Ike Perlmutter, and Kevin Feige is in control of everything now, so we he doesn't want to continue that deal. No. Uh, I mean, Once again. Like per mother. Yeah. I know I sound like a Marvel bootlicker when I say this, but please never retire, Kevin Feige. <laughs> please be the Vince McMahon of comic book shows. <laughs> Until actually, you start not doing good, and then we'll hate you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I, like, I want fucking to... NXT of Marvel shows, and we're going like this young guy, this guy who mar- married Kevin Feige's daughter is great. Damn it. <laughs> the darkest to... timeline. Speaking of darkest timelines, I got nothing. <laughs> uh, speaking of darkest timelines, uh, here's the thing: they gotta bring Fox into the MCU. Okay. I, I think they yeah, should like kind of because remember they're doing Deadpool three, and that's gonna be in the MCU. What if they just like, bring over like a handful of characters that I, I they like, like and can still do plenty of stuff with? Like they got yeah, Deadpool, they got Quick, they probably have Quicksilver now. Um. They could bring in like that version of Magneto, and I'd be happy. Yeah, with I was that. gonna say like bring that Magneto so good. I want, I want him. Uh, but like that, <laughs> that, saw... that, that Cyclops and Jean, you can leave them in that universe. Thank you very much. I, I like. I don't know. Like I, I always like. I always like the idea of taking the actors. Like what I thought. Like before, because I'm less convinced that this is just a random person who's happened to be played by Evan Peters. But when I thought that, I thought, oh, they could just bring back actors to like play new versions of the characters. But I'm like, oh no, this is multiverse stuff, definitely. So yeah, because mm-hmm. like those but are really like- good actors, but like. Like I see, when I saw this like interview clip with like there was like like with this like I, I retweeted it like a couple weeks ago when the Quicksilver thing got revealed, where it's like the Cyclops and Quicksilver's actors for uh, Dark Phoenix were bantering, and they're just like, man, when they're not being forced to do these movies, they're actually pretty fun. <laughs> 
the and that's the thing though. They might bring in Ian McClellan to be Magneto, and that might be the actor Paul Bettany's talking about. Oh my god! Wait, like the original Magneto, not like uh, Michael Fassbender Magneto. Yeah, OG yeah. Magneto. Oh, that'll be so good. But like, like, I feel like he's maybe got one more movie in. If that, I, yeah. And if you're doing Magneto, you need to do Magneto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, the Pringles mustache. <laughs> like, I say they're going to bring in Magneto, but it's a brand new actor. It is the first official mutant in the MCU. That would be X. Because yeah, name like, a more important mutant to the to the culture of Marvel. I mean, Wolverine? I could I could go up. I, I was going to say Wolverine, Professor X. I mean, Deadpool. Come on, bro. Yeah, I you but... knew everything about Marvel. Oh, well, like in the, in the... Magneto defines an aspect of Marvel comics, which is basically everyone diversity, is bro, and the sympathetic villain. Yeah, and also everyone is a jerk. <laughs> Humans are assholes. That's the story of Marvel comics. Humans yeah. are assholes. Fuck them, humans. Yeah, but we're Magneto humans. Was right. Magneto was right. Cyclops were right. Mutants are generally right about things. I mean, like, look at how... Okay, I was going to make an Inhumans joke, but it failed miserably, and I just don't know how to... <laughs> no, no, you can make an Inhumans joke. I'll make it for you. Just look at how the Inhumans treated the mutants. <laughs> you could make an Inhumans joke. I'll, I'll make one. The Inhumans. Oh, come on. Inhumans aren't bad. It's just they're when they're a, written to be they're mutants. They're the worst they're shit. thing Jack Kirby created. I mean, they infested that horrible Avengers game, so valid. The only the good thing that... that has ever come of the Inhumans is Miss Marvel. Yeah, oh yeah. That, I was like, actually got me reading Marvel comic. Oh, yeah, I don't Bolt, know like, shit I... about Black Bolt. He has a I cool heard his mini was that. good. I heard, I heard his mini was good. Like, Saladin Ahmed did his mini, and that, 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 now he's like writing like a good chunk. He's writing Miles and Mar- Miss Marvel now, so it must have been a really I high point. I didn't like his Miss Marvel, though. I, I, I saw that, like, uh, your review on that, that book website. Forgot what it was. Also, Crystal. Crystal's cool. Yeah. Lockjaw. Oh, oh Lockjaw. Lockjaw's neat. <laughs> no, no not- I really don't like where this conversation is going, so I just want you guys' predictions for next week, and then we're going to close out the show. Yeah, that uh, sounds good. We're going to get information about where they are and the Darkhold, because that's, that, that's the fucking Darkhold. I mean, they did a big zoom in on it, so obviously it's going to be important. Um, All right. I predict that they're suddenly going to go to Disney World. I'm sorry, Buster. I think we're past that now. Dang it. That well, would have been in the had... 80s when they did TGIF. I know, but, like, it was too perfect. Like, they, they, uh, Maybe it's the pandemic, because they did film the second half of the show in the pandemic. And I swear, there was, there was going to be 10 episodes. It's only nine episodes. The tenth, one of the, the, the missing 10th episode was going to be a Disney World episode. I'm going crazy because it's probably not true. All right. I look forward to your theory video later this week. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, like, but seriously, what are your actual predictions, Buster? Okay, actual predictions, uh, stuff will happen. Excellent. That, that's all I Very excellent. Uh, Pietro is Fox Pietro. He's just been mind-controlled up until that uh, mid credit scene. That's my yeah, prediction. Like, um, also, I just but, love that delivery of that line. Have you been snooping around? <laughs> Snooper's going to snoop. snoop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Snooper's got a Snoop. Yeah, yeah, I did that Snooper. Right now. <laughs> I love yeah. how I, I... My response to that was to just post Snoop Dogg gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize... I Like, I just assumed that was from some Snoop Dogg video that's a song about him being right about things. No. Because <laughs> it doesn't... It was literally just... He said Snoop. Here's a Snoop. <laughs> uh... But that is going to do it for this week's edition of Little Worse Than a Pod, a little better than a cast. So, Buster, tell everybody who you are and where they can find your stuff should they want to. What's up? I'm Buster Corp. I do vid... Do you call them video essays? Because they're only like five minutes. Video essays. Sure, it's sure, sure. We're calling them video essays on things. Oh, Mostly sure. Power Rangers took a sat to. Uh, might do a video game review this week. We'll see. Uh, check. I also do Wattpad stuff, so I'm kind of in a creative block of that so forgive me if i don't post regularly so just check out the links it happens uh boingo tell everybody where your stuff can be found hey howdy howdy my name is chris boingo writer gas and i do video essay and editorial things on my youtube channel you can find it at boingo writer you can find me on twitter at boingo underscore writer 
I talk about how right I am about understanding Marvel lore. What's up? <laughs> oh, uh, it's almost as if one of my favorite hobbies is to just go on the Marvel wiki and just look at everything. <laughs> God damn it. That was both a very fun and a very embarrassing night. Um, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Boingo underscore writer. Uh, you can join my Discord server. A link to that is in the description. And and I'm started streaming on Twitch again uh, after a uh, unintentional hiatus. I'm trying to do at least once a week. I'm, I may start doing more. But uh, last time I played some uh, Frog Detective with Vac here. You can go check out the VOD that's on Twitch right hey. now. It's eventually going to be on YouTube. I'll I'll get that whole thing set up. Uh, yeah, but go check me out on Twitch. Uh, follow me there. Uh, send me a tip if you want. I don't care. I'd like um, money. You don't have to. <laughs> uh, and I am the Vac Humanator. I make videos and things on the YouTube. Uh, currently on hiatus from that channel, though. But if you want to check out the backlog, you can do so at youtube.com slash the Vac Humanator, which is spelled T-H-E-V-A-C-U-U-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. You can follow me on Twitter for updates on things and stuff I'm doing. That's at the Vac Humanator. And you can follow me on Instagram to see some of my action figure photography. Uh, and hey, Brand Synergy, I'm posting some Marvel Legends photos right now. Uh, so go check that out at uh, at the underscore vacuuminator. And you can also check out all things modular media. And to do that, please go ahead and give this video a like, give it a comment, subscribe, ring the bell in order to enable notifications, and check out every episode of this podcast as it releases, as well as our other two podcasts that are currently going, uh, Modular Media Wrestling Podcast or MMWP, which is obviously our weekly live wrestling podcast, with me and Boingo, and look at them this sweaty week- boys. Yes, and this week in Toku or Twit, uh, our weekly Tokusatsu podcast with myself and Buster. Uh, that comes That's me. Out- yeah, that comes out on Tuesdays. And if you want updates on those things as they're being released and whatnot, you can follow us on Twitter at the Modular Media, and you can join our subreddit r slash modular media but that is going to do it for this week's episode of little worse than a pod a little better than a cast please join us back here again next week when we will be discussing the eighth episode of wandavision until then uh let's do some snooping snooping's gonna snoop 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 sn